The efficiency of beef systems has never been more important. And while there is a lot that can be done throughout the production system, it is the management at birth and immediately after that has the biggest bearing on the future productivity of a calf. The importance of getting good quality colostrum into the calf soon after birth can, cannot be understated. Colostrum is the first milk produced by a cow when she calves. It is highly nutritious as well as providing vital antibodies to the newborn calf. Human mothers transfer antibodies to their babies across the placenta, but this doesn't happen in cattle, so calves are born with no antibody protection at all. This is why getting colostrum into the calf is vital and will ensure the initial survival and ultimate profitability of an animal. Antibodies are absorbed through the calf's gut lining in a process called passive transfer. These antibodies don't just help protect the calf in the first few weeks, they can give protection for several months. One in three calves have full or partial failure of passive transfer, meaning that they have not received enough colostrum after birth. The outlook for calves with failure of passive transfer is poor. Those that receive an inadequate quantity or quality of colostrum in the first few hours of life are more prone to developing scours and pneumonia, have a higher rate of mortality, poorer live weight gains, and are likely to need more antibiotics over the lifetime. Most beef cows will calve down unassisted and the calf will get up and suckle vigorously without human intervention. Assuming the cow has plenty of quality colostrum, these calves should have high enough intakes to achieve full antibody protection. It is the calves that have a more challenging start to life that are more at risk of failing to absorb enough antibody. If a calf has been born with assistance, is a twin or is weak and dopey at birth, consider intervening and making sure that it gets enough colostrum. The target is a minimum of three litres in the first two hours of life. If in doubt, you should stomach tube or bottle feed the calf. If you've taken the time to catch the cow and calve her, while she is safely restrained, it's worth getting colostrum into the calf immediately after birth. And nothing beats dam's own colostrum. Taking time to milk the cow and feed the calf will pay dividends, provided this can be done safely. This may seem like an unnecessary and labour intensive job at a busy time of year, but taking time to do this will make sure that each calf gets off to the best possible start. If she has plenty of colostrum, cons consider storing some in case of emergency. You can safely store colostrum in the fridge for up to four days and in the freezer for up to a year. When reheating stored colostrum, always use a water bath and never use a microwave. If yonis is an issue in your herd, you should be cautious when sharing colostrum. Controlling yonis is an important conversation to be had with your vet. There are many powdered colostrum options on the market. Make sure you know what you're buying and also what it should be used for. They have a place and can be very useful in emergency situations, but from an antibody perspective, using high quality, fresh or frozen cow's colostrum is by far the best option. More information on colostrum and calving can be found on the Farm Advisory Service website.